Welcome, friends, to another edition of Tiffin Box TV. I'm your host, Seishu, and today I'm truly honored to be speaking with Matthew Jordan Smith, who is a commercial <laughs> photographer based in L.A., who does fashion portraits, uh, glamour, I'm sure, as well. Uh, but recently, he's just finished a book that really caught my attention. And I said, wow, Matthew, is there any way we can talk? And Matthew <laughs> totally jumped right in and said, yes, we can do it. Uh, the book is called Future American President. And as I'm looking at it right now on the web, uh, on my screen here, um, I'll read you a little bit about it. It says, Future American President celebrates the best of the American spirit while inspiring our children to dream big and never give up. Wow. You know, it's a... Just, a, I mean, but the very definition of what you're trying to do, Matthew, is that it's it's ambitious. It's uh, it's certainly a, a very, very welcome book uh, at this point in time in our history. Uh, but I wanted to hear from you. Tell us a little bit about the book. First of all, welcome. Thank you. It's good being here. It's great being here. Um, this book is a, is a passion project. It's a personal project. And I was I I had to do it. Um, it was all consuming, but I, I love the process. Uh, the process included going to every state in America and photographing children from 100 families. So it, it's a huge task. It took me almost three years to finish it. Oh, wow. And I'm so glad to finally have it out. And thanks for having me on the show. Oh, absolutely. Uh, that's truly ambitious. I didn't realize it, it, you, were, you went to every single state in the, in this, in the U.S. I mean, that's phenomenal. Um, <laughs> I know that you had a Kickstarter campaign that funded the project um, and you were fully funded uh, and raised almost $30,000 or more, right? Limited That's order. correct. That's correct. So you, you've, you've had some backing for this project uh, that you wanted to do. Tell us a little bit about how you decided, let's, let's do this as a crowdsourced project and, and why? What was it, why was it important to get everybody involved? Well, the, the first year I did it uh, out of my own pocket and uh, quickly ran out of money and uh, went through half of America. And one of the parents in the book approached me and said, Matthew, why don't you try Kickstarter to finish the book? At the time, I had never heard of Kickstarter. Um, so I did research and I was at first skeptical about doing it because I didn't want to put it out there mm -hmm. to, the, to the world yet. But then I said, you know what? I finished half the, of, a, of the states, so let me put it out there. And it also helped me uh, gather an audience. And not the audience was not just in America. They came from all over the world, which really surprised me. I yeah, mean, from they, everywhere. Yeah, right. And it was such a great process. And uh, so the Kickstarter process helped me finish the book, helped me finish going to all the other states and gather a, a great audience all over the place. Uh, I know. I know you've you've. You've raised the money, you've started the project already, you're halfway through almost, and, and you've decided to go through the other half. Uh, what, how did you find, uh, how did you pick the, the kids, or how did, the, the, uh, how did you pick the parents, I guess, more than anything else, and, and the kids? Now, was it the kids now, that's Actually, it, it was. Visually, it was the children, ah. but uh, it was all random. I want to make sure that there are like five kids in the book that I that I know. Mm -hmm. uh, besides that, they were all random. I go to places in, in America where families gather and I look for children that represent a group of children that I didn't have. So visually, it would represent all of America, black, white, Asian, Indian, whatever, Inuit. So I want to make sure I had a visual representation of America, red hair, freckles, the entire nine yards. Right. So then I'd push the families not knowing anything about me, tell them what I was doing, show them examples of my work by showing my first two books, and then also other examples of children I've shot around other places, and then they'd say yes, and it's been 15, maybe 20 minutes at the most, photographing and interviewing their children, and then on to the next state. And that's how I got 100 families. Wow, wow. So, uh, you know, the, I love the randomness of this. Uh, you know, it seemed like you were, you had some ideas and some plan in motion, but you just sort of flew to Alaska and where, where did you go? Fairbanks or do you know or where? Wh it's, it's funny because I remember that trip to Alaska very well. And um, I'm on the plane. I remember as I flew from Boston to Alaska. <laughs> oh, wow. So it, it was a crazy <laughs> trip. But on the last leg of that trip, I'm on the plane and I'm sitting by a gentleman and I'm telling him what I'm doing. And all of a sudden, the entire plane's involved in helping me find people in Alaska. It was an amazing process. But um, 
So the guy that I sat beside on the plane um, is a pilot, which a lot of people in, in Alaska are pilots, but he teaches children how to fly planes. Oh, wow. Which is wild. So he had these two children that he knew about who were in his class, who were learning how to fly planes, fix planes. He said, this one little girl's amazing. You've got to, know, you've got to meet this girl. He called the father and the, and the mother, told them what I was doing, uh, gave me the information, and that's how I found them. I also found, uh, uh, I want to find an Inuit child in Alaska as well. So I had help from the Boys and Girls Clubs of America help me find children around America the second year as well. So that helped me find children as, as well around the country. So you made multiple trips to Alaska? Is that right? Uh, no, just one. Just, just one. one. Okay. So I shot two children in Alaska okay. for that part. Okay. And the, there are some states where I shot more than one. Like, for example, New York and California, I shot more children and, and also Texas in those states because uh, they represent, I can find different ethnicities, ethnic groups in those states. Um, and it helped me have a more rounded feeling in those big states where I have a lot of ethnic groups. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Uh, I get the idea of what the book is about, but I want to know from you why you wanted to do it. Ah, so this is this is probably the for me the important part. As a child, I had a, a hobby, and that hobby was photography. My father turned me on to photography. Then I read a book, and that book changed my life because for the first time in this book, I read about a person who looked like me, Gordon Parks, mm -hmm. and he was doing photography as a career. And it, it really changed my life. It, it, uh, it turned on my light bulb. It was the first moment that I felt I could be a photographer as a career. And that was just planting the seed. I didn't really think at that point that it was possible, but as I went on throughout my life, I'm like, it, was, it always stayed there. So I found out at that very early point in my life that you know it's important to have something visually that makes you see possibilities. So I want to do a book the same way that can inspire children all over the country to believe that they can do anything and really implant the seed. That's really the, the essence of this book, to inspire children. I also want to inspire my stepson. Um, when I met my stepson, he was four years old. Uh, he's now 11. But I want to, and I'm not with his mother anymore, we're, we're divorced, but I still wanted to inspire him at a young age and do something that would affect his entire life. Um, as a matter of fact, I, I, I dedicate the book to him. Um, and I think it will inspire not only him, but all the children all over the country to believe that anything is possible um, by seeing their peers, by seeing other children that look like them and knowing that all things are possible. Now that's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Um, I think I, ha I have a very strong feeling about the fact that uh, if you wa watch TV, for instance, uh, you know, there are lots of people who are missing on TV. You know? Yes. And the fact is, the minute you start not representing them in any way, it's positive, whether it's visual or on, in, in stories and newspapers, they become they start to become invisible. Yes, uh, and absolutely. That, and that's that's a, a scary, scary uh, idea, I think. Uh, and I, I'm so glad that you're actually you've stepped up and actually done something about it, you know, and, and you've, you've brought together this book. Um, uh, you, you are um, you're, you're a very well known uh, fashion photographer, portrait photographer. Uh, and a lot of the a lot of the, the images that you've sent me to, to display in part of this blog post uh, you know, suggest that you've taken them outdoors. What, yes. Did that pose any challenges to you? Because you don't know, you know, there's, there's a little less control, I guess, when you're outdoors than you're Absolutely. indoors, right? <laughs> Absolutely. It, it's funny, and I, I tell this story because there were a lot of challenges making this project, for sure. Um, I want to shoot everyone outside because subliminally, I want to show America. Visually, I want to show the country. Um, I was blessed in a lot of ways because as I went to every state in America, I never had rain. It never rained on me except for one state. So there was only one day where I had to stay longer because of rain, and that was Wyoming. Uh, besides that, I never had rain throughout the other states. It would rain the day before I shot or the day after, but never on a shoot. So I know 
this project's been blessed in a, in a very special, special way because that doesn't happen. Uh, I go to places where there had been a tornado, like Moore, Oklahoma, had, uh, had just had the biggest tornado in history. So I got there days after the tornado. I'm driving through Tornado Alley in the, at the height of tornado season. I'm going through flood areas uh, like, uh, you know, in Missouri, uh, like days after floods happen. But nothing ever affected me from shooting. So I was lucky or blessed, whatever you want to say. But uh, I, I, I was very fortunate to have this happen. I also wanted to make sure I had this, this visual way of having all the pictures look uh, connected. So I, I dragged my strobes around and I made it a process of taking pictures and lighting each child so they had the feeling of a production. If I'm taking a picture with just like an iPhone or picture or camera and there's no lights or production around it, it's like a snapshot. Yes. I want to give it a more high production feel. So I dragged my pro photo strobes I take to shoot you know, any celebrity around and, and made these children feel like a celebrity by lighting them, by giving them the process of a real proper photo shoot. So it feels special. Yes. So they have everybody gathering around to watch them because it's not just the photo shoot, it's the experience of the photo shoot that they have and it gives them a moment they'll remember for the rest of their lives. Indeed, indeed. Uh, speaking of the rest of their lives, imagine them picking up this book 20 years from now. How do you think they're going to feel about their message? I'm assuming they came up with their own messages, right? Yes, yes. So the message that they, the, the words that they hold, yeah. I gave, I sometimes gave the children the idea of writing what they wanted to say, but sometimes I have it for them ahead of time. But then all the handwritten messages that they write, that's all from them. Sure. And sometimes it's the parents writing for them if they're, if they're younger, like, you know, three months old or six mm -hmm. months old, then the parents are writing their wish for their child. Sure. But the idea was really just a plant that seed that anything is possible. In some cases, these children are hearing about being president for the first time in their lives. And it's, it's planting that seed because you never know. You never know. Absolutely. So, uh, yeah, go ahead. Go so, ahead. so 20 years from now, I'm hoping that this book really stays with them. They start seeing this book. I think that, you know, for these children who are like, you know, five, six, seven, whatever, it's freezing that moment in history for them. So as they get older, they're always looking back and seeing this book and remembering that time. And who knows? Maybe 30 years from now, they'll be like, yes, you know, as a child, I want to become president. There is a, there is a, a very famous character now on, on social media called Kid President. I'm yes. sure you've seen, it, seen the yes. videos, right? As a matter of fact, I was doing the project when that first came out. I was halfway through the project when I was doing it. And I got all these messages from people who knew I was, what I was doing. Like, have you seen Kid President? Right. And at that time, I tried to contact him and get him for the book, but uh, they never responded. But uh, it's just weird timing. Indeed, indeed. Uh, you've, you've gone from, as I said, you know, you've, you're a fashion photographer and a, a portrait photographer to photographing kids in their environment. Uh, you know, what is it? How, how did that process feel for you? Uh, did it feel somewhat different and weird initially? Or do you were you like, oh, this is all very easy stuff? Well, it's never, never weird for sure. I think every job is a challenge. Mm -hmm. And I love that part about this industry that every day is different. Um, I love a different challenge each day. And this was definitely different for me from working from celebrities and, and in adults, fashion models to kids. But for me, it's the same thumbprint because I love photography mm -hmm. and, and having photography affect people in a strong way. It's even better with children and very much like celebrities. Sometimes they have 15 minutes to get the shot with kids. You have five minutes to get the shot. <laughs> <laughs> so I love that about it. But seeing them come alive and capture that moment, the instant it happens. It's a wonderful feeling. I'm sure you've been asked this, or you maybe even considered it. Uh, you think a sequel might be in order? You think there? Well, we'll not, see. Not, not right away. Maybe, <laughs> maybe five or ten years from now, you you think about doing another book with different kids, obviously, um, you know, and plant it, more seeds. Yes. Well, anything's possible. People have mentioned that to me already, and for sure. And uh, right now, I'm going to focus the next two years on just pushing and promoting this book a lot. 
But yes, I'm open to everything and anything. I'd love to see what happens and uh, maybe even have a time capsule happen with this book. I don't know. We'll see. Um, I asked my my followers on Twitter uh, to ask you questions, and one of them uh, by Peter Doyle uh, asked me to ask you. He says, what was the unexpected and hard part of this project? What challenged you? Oh, wow. That's a great question. I got to tell you, everything was hard. Um, Number one, just traveling to every state in America uh, is one thing. But when you add bringing gear, right. bringing all your gear, bringing all posters, uh, finding strangers, it's, it's a daunting task. Um, and then when I finally finish the book, in terms of the, the shooting the book, it's the production of the book. So every aspect was hard. Um, even now that the book is out, you know, I have the book finally in my hand, but it's now but, you know, getting the book out there to the masses. So every part of it is is daunting and exhausting and all consuming, but it's well worth it. I love it. Do you do you happen to have ideas or suggestions on for other photographers looking to do other personal projects like this? Absolutely. Um, because, I mean, I, I sense that you've done this, uh, you know, for all the reasons we have already discussed, but something a little bit more maybe to keep things fresh for you, maybe to to go out and meet more people. I don't know. What What is it that that personal projects do for you? Uh, what they do for me, and this is very important, I think every photographer should have a personal project because it keeps you in love with photography. Mm-hmm. When you're when you're working on an assignment, you're shooting for a client. And very often it's that client's vision. So what do you do that feeds your soul as a photographer? That's where the personal projects come in. And it's different because, okay, a job happens and maybe you have, you know, a week, maybe a month in advance of producing that job. You shoot it, it's on the magazine cover, it's a billboard, and then it goes away. A book project is very different. It's a much longer process. This is three years in the making. Mm -hmm. And then hopefully it lasts, you know, 10, 15 years. Who knows? It's a much different scale. And it and it's from your heart. So you have that, that thumbprint that's part of you that really goes into it. So it's a very different thing. And it keeps you fresh also by uh, you know, keeping you sharp. Indeed. Uh, you know, I just finished watching a, a, a video, an interview with uh, a photographer named Alex Webb. I don't know if you know Alex Webb's work. Um, you know, he's a photographer who's photographed in a variety of countries. He's got a very, very different uh, you know, style to a to his approach uh, and, and one of the things he says is that the images are also a response to the way he sees the world how how, how how are you responding to the images that you've you've captured of these kids it's funny he says that because i feel the same way it is the way you see the world um whenever i like you said earlier when i turn on the tv on i see uh little diversity mm-hmm. but when i go to you know, New York or L.A. or walk around any place, I see a lot of different people that you don't see represented on TV. I want to make sure that in this book, it represents how I see America uh, visually, what I see. I want to make sure that everybody's represented in this book. Why do you see this disparity, uh, this this lack of diversity, I guess, in the in the in television or Internet or, you know, Whatever. I mean, is there is there a certain reason behind that? That's a that's a good question. You know, I, I do a lot of advertising photography as well. So I've I've seen all the images. Um, I've been in the meetings. I've I've heard uh, the thought process and. Uh, things need to change for sure. I would love to have that change uh, happen in some kind of way, but it's hard to happen commercially. In this personal project, I can change that. Uh, as a matter of fact, even with my the cover of my book, mm-hmm. I want to make sure that I chose a child for the cover that was uh, racially ambiguous, that you can't tell what um, the race is. I also want to make sure that the book spoke to being future American president. And so far, we've had 44 presidents that have been men. So I want to put a little girl on my cover. Um, even even that, though, I had a, I have a very interesting story. Um, on the back, there's a, a little boy on the cover. Oh, uh, wow. And he's a, a good-looking kid. And at first, I thought about putting him on the cover. 
because he's such a striking little boy. Mm-hmm. So I go to do the photo shoot and I finish the photo shoot of him and the mother comes to me and says, Matthew, I love my son. You know that. I know he'd make a great cover, but as a mother, if I were to walk into a store and see a book that says future American president, and I saw a little girl in that cover, it would stop me. Mm. And in that moment, I knew I had to find the perfect little girl to put on the cover. That's great. And then before I knew it, I found this little girl, and she was just beautiful and freckles. And, and unless I tell you her background, you'd never know. Yep, indeed, indeed. Well, I, I assume her background is discussed or uh, written out in the, in the book, or is that... Is Actually, that it's not. It's not, it's not mentioned not. at all. Uh, so I can hopefully talk about it in, in interviews like this. Um, her background is, is uh, multi-ethnic, um, um, half Japanese half uh, white, half black, you know, she's just a, a mix of everything. So I, I, I love that about her. Indeed, indeed. Uh, it's been, it's been a, a great little chat with you, Matthew. I know it's uh, a long time in coming. We were supposed to meet several years ago now, I think in Connecticut, yes. but I think <laughs> weather prevented you or delayed your flight in. Um, I look forward to seeing where this book t- takes you and perhaps takes us all, to be honest with you. Uh, because I think it's an important book that everyone should own and share with other kids. Uh, although the, the, the buying of the book is probably going to be by an adult, it should be shared with other kids. So I'm going to be buying the book and showing it to my sons uh, who are nine and seven right now. And I want them to be inspired by what they see in the book as well. So thank you so much for joining me today, Matthew. Thank you. There's one more thing I want to say about the book as sure, well. It's please. not just uh, inspiration. It's also educational as well. Um, in the book, children can learn about all the past presidents, where they were born, visually. I think it's so important visually to see things. Like there's a map in the book that shows the entire country. And then in that map, you see where every president is born and then the years that they served in office. So visually, they can learn that way. Also, yeah. the sequence of the book is, is put together where you see um, the first state to the last state. And you learn how each how America was born, how it all came together, and how every state, you, you learn the year that each state became part of the union. So visually, you're learning, you know, as well. No, this is great. You know, uh, my wife and I just took our sons down to D.C. just a few days ago. Ah. And we just spent a good deal of time going to George Washington's uh, uh, home in Mount Vernon and, and definitely looked at, you know, the Capitol building and, you know, went down to the White House and, you know, the kids are very excited about learning about their presidents, you know, the country's presidents in the past. Um, and this is this is perfect. This is great. I mean, it's not just a picture book. It's actually a, a learning tool. So absolutely. I, I mean, I hope libraries and schools decide to just go for it as well and, 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 and invest in this book, because I think it's important. Um, it's an important, really a document for everyone to, to really enjoy. So. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Matthew. I appreciate it. Pleasure. Pleasure, pleasure, pleasure. All right. We'll talk again soon. Take You've care. You've got it. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye.